traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to have Shane Smolian is going to be our guest at the break today. Tomorrow, Jim Bartoleone, Bart's Charts will be on. But what I'd like to talk about today, I have posted into the uh, room uh, for the Tiger Den a web, uh, a uh, let's put a link to an interview that was done by Walt Bressert in 1998 for uh, Stocks and Commodities magazine. Um, I want to thank George for sending it out to me. I hadn't seen this in a long time. It's been, what, 20, uh, 25 years ago? 20, 25 years ago. And so uh, I think if you'll take a look at that, he talks about cycles and why they're important. I'm going to talk about it a little bit, but right now I want to cover what's happened in the market. I posted yesterday what that high was supposed to be. We came down, we stopped exactly at the 61% retracement, and then we rallied up. And uh, to the 61% retracement there at 40.30 in the S, a little bit higher than that, a few points. Uh, but that's what we're watching here right now. The problem, folks, is in the banking industry. We have banks that are in big trouble. Now, I'm going to bring this one up to you. This is the, this is a summation of the banks, uh, the NASDAQ banks. Okay, let's just get these up here so you can take a look at. This is the one that Jim Bartolionis, Bartolioni <laughs> talked about here uh, when we had that big uh, Gartley pattern right here that was a, also a 382 on the weekly and now you can see we've had this but with all this news of helping everybody look it's still down and it's still dropping even the quality stuff folks I mean major quality the only one that is that is going up at all is uh, is Goldman Sachs and that's just you know barely making a uh, a 382 retracement let me get this one up here that's just telling me that there's something not right here that's that's really the that's bottom line so let's put up goldman sachs and we'll take a look at it and uh, i'll be doing dave's show i keep uh, referring to him like he's still here and i think he is anyway you can see we made that 382 uh, a couple days ago and then we rallied back and we're testing it again that's why the dow has been up so much so very interesting so we want to pay very, very close attention to that. Now, the positions that we're looking at that we really felt really strongly about was the gold market, which we bought down there at the uh, 1040, 1942 level. It's a little bit higher than that. I wanted to show you the importance of the 382 retracement, folks. Just get this up here, and you'll be able to see uh, beautiful Gartley, and it also encompasses what the AI says. It says in about a half an hour, we should start down on gold. And the ABCD measures there to 1999. That's pretty close. Don't know if it's going to happen or not, but we're going to see if that's correct. Look at the beautiful 382 retracement right here, folks. Perfect ABCD right there. That's a $20 move in gold, you know, with a risk of about four bucks. Those are the kind you look for. You know, sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong, but that's what you want to be watching. So let's pay close attention to that. Now, um, the other one that I wanted to show you, I know it's it's Bitcoin, but I, I have to give you these patterns as I see them. This is the one that we've been watching for a very long time. And I said, when I see the bell being rung, I'll let you know. And they rang the bell last night. This is the pattern we were looking at. You can see the 382 there. And I just want to bring it up so that you can see it now in real life. I'm just going to move it over here into a uh, four-hour chart. And it shows the three drive to a top pattern. And we'll talk about that in just a bit. Here we go. I don't know if this affects the stock market, but look at this. This is a perfect three drive pattern. Look at this move that we've had here, folks. That's a monster move. There's the 382 right there. The perfect three drive. Look at that. One, two, three. Just can't be any better than that. Off a little bit. Now, if we get above this, lights out. It's going to go a lot higher. That's what patterns are for. Because when they fail... 
that means they're going in the opposite direction. So try to pay attention to that. That's something that uh, may or may not be, you know, helpful uh, in your trading. Now I'm going. To, I've got a little bit uh, two two segments here today. I wanted to share with you. Uh, I wanted to show you J.P. Morgan just to show you. this. This is the best bank in in the country as far as I'm concerned. And uh, only because the guy that founded it was a real genius. Anyway, you can see, look at this. With good news, we gap up, can't make the 382, and look at it now, and it's still dropping. Now, what, let me ask you a question, boys and girls. There's really smart people in the banking system. Some of them are not so smart, you know, just like any other business. But why are all of them going down, except you know, with the exception of Goldman Sachs? And that's an investment bank. That's not the kind of bank that most people use. Something's wrong. They're, they're either talking to each other or something is going on that they know. I know what the trouble is, that the funds that they're getting from the Federal Reserve, they realize that they're printing funny money, and something is going to be really, really crazy here, it looks like. It's getting really ominous, folks. Uh, that's all. We, you know, if it doesn't make any difference. You know, your, your money is safe. It's the people that are in the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the, you know, that own the shares of the company are the ones that are going to get creamed. Now, let me show you updated here what I think is happening in the stock market today. I'll get this up here so we can take a quick look at it. I wanted to finish it before we come to the next break. But there's where we were last night. You see, we went right to the 61% retracement. We started the rally. We got right up here. And if we go below this low right here, you see that cycle low right here? You see how the cycle lines up? If that if that breaks today, if we make a new low below that 39, uh, 3965, that low yesterday, then you're looking at A, B, C, D. And when you break this one, uh-oh, look out. Then it's then it's really, really tough. See, this is, you're seeing high translation here. You see that, how it crests on the right? That's really bullish. That why if it goes below here, that's left translation that they talked about. Now, the article that uh, if you, you can get this article, just go to um, www.waltbresser.com. And I think there's something else in there about WB3 or something, but uh, the link is there. I posted it into the room, and so that you can able to, you'll be able to see it. It should be no problem at all, and uh, it's really a good article. I'm going to be talking about that when we get back from the uh, the first break because uh, he's just got so much wonderful stuff with it. It's just really great. But I wanted to share with you a, a couple of other of uh, these uh, banking stocks because they they look so horrific that it's it's absolutely scary i mean it, it it really is and where are they i'm looking for the ones that have been down quite a bit so we'll find out if that is the case well those are the main ones i guess yeah those are the main the main ones i wanted to show you were the uh, uh the banking index for the nasdaq the jp morgan goldman sachs bank of america where's bank of america it's one of the big ones and i can't uh, I can't define the, the Bank of America. Hold this. Uh, what is it right here? Ah, here's, well, that, that's not it. But, well, I'm going to find it because I did it three times and I put it in here. I just can't, uh, I've got so many things to show you that I can't get them all done. And, well, son of a gun, can't find it. I'll find it maybe. Hmm. Okay. Let's get old Bank of America. I got to get rid of some of this junk. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Mike on the line. Mike, are you there? Yeah, hi, hi. How are you there, Larry? I am good, my friend. What can I do for you? Uh, yeah, well, you were discussing uh, the demise of the of the Nasdaq Bank Index, and I wanted to come up uh, and discuss H uh, and R Block, which is basically a, a fintech now. And uh, I was just wanting um, this hedge fund came out today. This contrarian hedge fund came out with a sell signal on it, and uh, it had a big dump this morning. So mm -hmm. I was just wondering whether or not, you, you, if you could look at the charts on the daily or weekly basis and tell me whether or not this is the next Enron. Okay, let me, uh, what is the symbol on? Uh, uh, SQ. SQ is H&R block. I wonder why it's an H&R, whether it must be used. This uh, is, I think they merged know, with Square. Uh, oh, they merged with Square. Yeah, Square was a pain. Yeah, they, they, they right? took out yeah, Square, okay, they kept yeah. the symbol. Okay, Type Square, SQ. SQ. Okay, so did H and R buy Square? That's what it had to be. Because, yeah, I think uh, so. Yeah, yeah, I think it was about a year ago. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. We've got a little bit of time here, so let's just take a quick look at. It. I have to add it to the system, so just give me okay. one second, and uh, we are looking here. Uh, SQ. I had a very good friend that was in that stuff from the very beginning and made a lot of money. Oh, oh Howard Holland. Howard, uh, hold on, just a minute. But did he yeah. close out his position? Oh, he got out right near the high. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, he oh. sure did. Okay. All righty. Uh, whoa, boy, they're getting it. They're getting it. Oh, I don't know if it's. Uh, le oh, let's let's get the daily up first to see where we are, Mike. And the sharks are swimming, through. right? The sharks are swimming well, around. They smell blood. It doesn't look very good. There's something wrong with this one too. Let's pull this up so you folks can see it. I wouldn't put any money into this one because uh, there's trouble in River City on this one, Mike. I don't know if it's going to be a you know one that goes to tapioca or anything like that, but there's some so, there, there there's some major problems in this stock. I wouldn't touch it. If we go below those uh -huh. lows that we made back in October, and we're not very far away, you know that that means another thirty percent down on this. So I wouldn't touch it. Had a really nice sell signal just uh, yesterday. Actually, you had a nice one three uh -huh. five pattern up there, and then it closed badly, and then down the big gap. Somebody knew something. That's why they were dumping it. Mm -hmm. 
I hope that helps. Are you involved with it, Mike? You don't have any projected downside uh, targets, do you? Yeah, I do. All you have to do is take the bottom of the chart out and add about another forty dollars to the stock. That the they would add add about forty dollars, subtract forty dollars from where we are right now, and that'll give you a big A B C D to the downside. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're taking the high, subtract the low, and the yeah. difference you subtract take from the ABCD, October low. Yeah, okay, and that'll get you. That'll get Thank you. you very much. Hey, you're welcome, my friend. Stay, stay nice over there. And spring's coming, or here, spring is here. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mike. Okay, folks, I posted that chart again for Walt Bresser, and I want to do it again because it's uh, that important to me, and I think it's that important to you, Walt. Uh, I'm not going to be able to cover it all. I'm going to cover it on on, da on uh, David's show next. I keep saying David's show. I should say the next show. <laughs> uh, sure, miss him. Okay. Uh, this is what Walter did. You can see ABCDs here, right? All right. Now, Walt Bresser, let me just give you a heads up, okay? I met Walt in, oh, it must have been 1970, April, at the uh, found, uh, the Profit Magic of Stock Transaction meeting in San Francisco, where I met John Hill and Peter Lides and a whole bunch of other people. And I got involved with Cycles. Uh, and in 19, uh, he was here, uh, Walt moved, moved to Tucson in the 80s. And during the 80s, I would come over and visit he and Teresa here in Tucson. They had a little ranch, a nice ranch on the uh, east side of town. Uh, and what I would do is, you know, we'd do Cycle stuff. And then, you know, we went our separate ways. He started uh, HAL Commodity Service, which was H H A L means high and low. And uh, he was the reason why you're seeing charts on a computer like this. The pri the pioneer of that was uh, Walt Bresser. He was one of three people that started it. Walt Bresser and the fellow down in New Orleans, Tim. Oh dear, I'll remember Tim Tim Slater and Mark Douglas and uh, Walt Bresser. Those are the guys that got started to put this stuff together. Uh, so you could get a you know a laptop or it wasn't a laptop of course but it was a desktop you could actually see the prices, and change the uh, time frames and get your oscillators all put in. That all came to fruition sometime in early 1983. Walter was a pioneer in that. He's also one of the people that knew uh, Edwin Dewey for the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. Uh, it, it's just all the stuff that he's done through the years. His son, Jerome, lives here in Tucson, and his mother, uh, his uh, widow is here, uh, Teresa, who used to be a Playmate of the Year a couple years back. Anyway, um, the uh, thing that you want to give your hats off for Walt, because he did so much stuff, and uh, this article is so it's in uh, March issue of 1999, uh, Walt passed away just about, oh, it must have been, hmm, I can tell you almost exactly, about 18 years ago over in Las Vegas. He got Alzheimer's really quickly, and uh, he just he left us in a hurry. And uh, Jerome, uh, one of the stand-up guys, his, he had two sons, and Jerome's still in the business, but Jerome was involved with Paragon Financial. Remember them, PFG? Paraffin Financial with uh, Russell Wassendorf, and he basically ripped off a whole lot of people for a whole lot of money with his private jets and everything. And all of his trades were just like Sidney, or not Sidney Madoff, like Bernard Madoff. They were all done on a copying machine. He never did anything. All of it was was moving money around, and that's pretty much uh, what he was doing. But I'd like for you to read this article if you get a chance because. Uh, it, it was in uh, a Stocks and Commodities magazine, and he talks about oscillators. He talks about double bottoms, double tops, all of those things that we look at, the patterns that we watch. Now, he didn't do much in Fibonacci. Uh, I tried to get him interested in it, but he said, and it's the same thing with astrology, even though he knew Edwin Dewey, and Edward Dewey was, he was really into astrology. And these, these cycles are nothing more than astral cycles. I feel strongly about that. I don't know the answer to him, but the guy coming on next does. Shane Smolian will be our guest. So I think you'll enjoy some of these things that you'll get here. If you don't uh, if you don't have access to this, uh, it's Larry at tradingtutor.com. I'll copy and paste it and ship it out to you. It's that important for you. If you like cycles, it's that important. I just want to mention the 12 cardinal mistakes that you don't want to do. Lack of a game plan, lack of money management, Failure to use protective stops, taking small profits and letting your losses run, overstaying your position, averaging a loss, meeting margin calls, 
increasing your commitment with success, over trading your account, failure to remove targets or profits from your account when you want to buy something nice, and changing your strategy during market hours. Lack of patience or trading for excitement, not for profit. Those were the 12 things that he lived by. And he said in the article he was embarrassed to show them because he'd broken the rules so many times, but that's what rules are for. You break them enough and you realize, hmm, maybe I better stop breaking that rule, and that's pretty much uh, what you want to be uh, looking at. But I, I wish you could have met him. Uh, he was about four years older than me, and uh, boy, he was one smart cookie. And uh, really enjoyed all the time I spent with him. I came here probably a half a dozen times. It's why, why I live in Tucson is because of Walt Presser. That and my cousin live here. We'll be right back with Shane Smolian, thewolftrader.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have the WolfTrader.com on the line. Shane Smolian, how are you doing, young man? Good afternoon, Mr. Larry. How are you? I'm good, my friend. What do you got for us today, buddy? Well, first of all, I... Just want to express my condolences for David White. Yeah, um, it's a huge loss, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, there's no words. I mean, I, I was doing a webinar on Saturday, and somebody had put it in the chat, and I had no idea. It was just, it really shook me up. I was, I was, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't even get my focus. I was just, it was just such a shock. So, yeah, 58 um, years old. That's pretty young. Yeah. So, to, my condolences to to everyone, TFNN and his family, and everybody who loved and supported him so yeah uh, anyway you. all right so uh today uh i'm gonna try to make a little bit of sense of what's going on 
because there's been a lot going <laughs> well, on in the last few weeks. I hope somebody weeks. does. <laughs> and uh, I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to try to 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 kind of put put a little bit of the pieces together to give a little bit of the context in terms of what I how I see it with the Fed and where we're going from here. Uh, so I'm going to start out with just with some headlines here in terms of what I think is likely going on here. I think the I think there's a good chance that this bear market is over or coming to a close pretty pretty soon here. We covered our we had some short positions that for the most part the longer term positions were covered last October. Uh, I, I do see behind the scenes the Fed is continuing to build strong behind the scenes and this is an important theme here because of what we're seeing in the, in the recent weeks uh, in terms of what they've been doing with the lending behind the scenes. So everything now is behind the scenes and when we see what they're saying uh, explicitly at the meetings, you know, they're still doing a minor rate hike or, or they're considered a pause. They're, they're considering this a, more or less a dovish meeting. But really, it's a tale of two stories, you know, what's happening on the surface and then what's happening behind the surface. Uh, I still think it's gaining strength behind the scenes. Uh, in terms of the astro cycles, you were, you were speaking about that earlier, that these are just cycles. I agree with you. And there's one of the biggest cycles is the Saturn cycle. Uh, this made a big low on 320, and so this cycle uh, goes up for quite a few months. It goes all the way up into the fall. Uh, so, yeah, I think if, if we can stabilize the banking situation here, and that's a big that's a big if, but if we can stabilize things, uh, I think we have a chance at some type of a low here, a, a significant low in this market. So we will see. Those are the headlines. This is just kind of how I see it now. The Fed internals went into this buy back in October. Uh, they had been down for over a year. So really, that's when I started tracking the change behind the scenes. Um, so the, re the recent banking crisis is largely related to liquidity issues of bonds that are underwater. Now, of course, there's other issues, bad loans and things like that. There's other issues here going on as the, as the Fed raises rates. But a big part of this problem was that these banks had these uh, these assets, okay? So they had these these bonds, which are typically very they're very liquid assets. I mean, they're still liquid, but the rates raised so quickly that the the value of the bonds dropped. So these these banks had these unrealized losses on their books. Now, for the Fed, that's not a problem because the Fed the Fed can never have a bank run. So the Fed can just sit on those unrealized losses until the bonds mature, and then they get the full payment. Now, there's larger banks. Bank of America and Chase and some of these bigger banks, they have those unrealized losses, but they, they're so big that they can just afford to just let them sit there. But in the best case scenario, that that's that's still money that's out of the system now because that they're not gonna sell they're not gonna sell that off at an unrealized loss if they don't have to. But some of these smaller banks have these bonds that are underwater, and then when people come, when the, 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 the depositors come and they want their money, you have to provide that money instantly. And so if you if if you have an asset on your books and it's underwater and so that creates a problem so this is this is what's happening to a lot of the smaller banks so the fed so that's just kind of like a, a broad based summary uh of course there's there's other issues but this is the kind of the big issue that the fed is addressing so the, the fed has conducted a series of behind the scenes bailouts to provide liquidity now i'm going to address this the assets have increased on the balance sheet but that's not necessarily qe in the sense that we think of it uh, so it's it's kind of a weird thing. Uh, the Fed made these loans, assets increased, but they didn't buy bonds and they didn't buy mortgage-backed securities. Well, they bought a little bit of mortgage-backed securities. They bought about $150 million, but they're not really doing QE in the sense of they're going to just buy the treasuries like they were before. So, so what's going on here? Well, the Fed releases this statement on March the 12th, which this is the night that, you know, we had the – Silicon Valley and Signature Bank. And so they came out at 615 right after the futures opened and they announced a new uh, a new facility, essentially. So so the Fed pops up these facilities as they need them. They did they, they did this during COVID. There was all these different facilities that they had, corporate credit facilities, secondary corporate credit facility, Main Street lending facility, the TALF, which helps consumers. So they they call this the bank term funding program. And so what they did was they loaned money to the banks up to one year in length. And what they did was they they took these assets that the bank had that was underwater and they loaned them the full value of the amount. So this these assets will be valued at par. 
and it's an additional source of liquidity against high high quality securities. So this is what they did, and they made available up to twenty five billion from the exchange stabilization fund. So what they essentially did here was they provided it's kind of a short term fix. They provided liquidity, so now that money is not frozen there that they can actually use that money. They can access that money. So if depositors come, they can ex they can access that money, which is really important. Uh, and then the uh, so this is talking about Yellen was in there too, and um, they also said that uh, the, the depository institutions may obtain liquidity against a wide range of collateral through the discount window, which remains open and available, and this will be using the same margins used for the securities. So they're going to do the same thing. They're going to let them use the, the, the par value for these securities, which is good. And so that provides a backstop. So this is all behind the scenes. So the Fed raises, of course, in the meeting, they raise rates and hand waving and all that stuff. But behind the scenes, they're really addressing this to, to provide this liquidity. And this this is going to go on for at least they can do this for at least a year. So advances can be requested under the program until March 11th, 2024. So what this means is that the, it, it was a big step in redu uh, reducing uh, increasing the liquidity for these banks that had what are good assets. I mean, we know that the, the treasuries are good assets, but they're just underwater because they raised rates so fast they can't access these funds. So this is what the Fed did. So what does all this mean? Well, the Fed has bought time. Uh, they definitely have bought some time. So, you know, maybe they anticipate at some point the bond prices have to come back up to 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 meet these the original rates. OK, that that that's ha that has to happen. Uh, but they bought some time, which is good. Uh, and the banks can access this, these assets with unrealized losses. And the, the, like I said, the program will last at least one year. Uh, technically, it's not quantitative easing, but the assets are expanding now. And QT has walked backwards. So we're going to look at that for in a second here. And again, I'm just trying to make some sense of what's going on to explain to people. Because people ask me, is quantitative easing starting again? So technically, no. But when we look at the Fed, you know, the Fed has these assets. So usually we think of... We think of these two these two here, U.S. Treasuries, mortgage-backed securities. These are the, the highest – U.S. Treasuries are the highest rated. And then there's corporate bonds, uh, which we saw during COVID, and then asset-backed securities, which is involved with the TALF program, which helps consumers. So people think the Fed is all for the big banks. That's not true. They're, they they help out the consumer markets too. Like if you go to buy a car, there's nobody there to back that. The Fed steps in with the TALF, and so they helped out the consumers too. Foreign currencies – uh, physical assets like gold, but people don't realize loans uh, like through the discount window or the bank term funding program, which is this new facility, those are assets. We got to pay a few bills now, my friend. Sure. Be back with Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the market's open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. We're back, folks, speaking with Shane Smoley and TheWolfTrader.com. Please continue, my friend. Okay, so why are we talking about all of this Fed stuff here? Well, I, I just want to give the context in terms of what is actually happening here because uh, with these loans, this is these are the assets of the Fed. So, okay, so we had this period here with quantitative tightening. So everybody was talking about, call it QT, right, which is the opposite of quantitative easing. So you had this quantitative tightening that was going on for a while, um, mainly treasuries. They're, they actually had started buying the mortgage-backed securities couple weeks ago they bought about 150 million but you see this big spike up here this is what just happened here and so this pushes us back to about november 23rd so the assets have increased again but that's not because they're buying treasuries and mortgage-backed securities it's because of what's going on with these new programs behind the scenes so this hasn't improved the liquidity for the banks it's, it's helping them draw upon some of these uh assets but it's kind of rolling back to QT. So, and, and, and behind the scenes, there's liquidity increasing, even though they're tightening on the surface at the meeting. So this is the strange thing. So I thought they would come out and just reverse like the Bank of England did, but they, they did a, it's gonna have a similar effect. Uh, but I think that this meeting was actually very important because it solidified their stance. So on the surface, they're gonna slowly raise hikes, maybe pause, they talked about possibly pausing uh, so some people viewed that as a as a dovish meeting, but behind the scenes they're providing bailouts and stimulus. So those holes that are forming, again, technically they got bigger with the assets if if the if the bonds keep falling, but they are addressing the situation behind the scenes. So I think this is a good situation because the Fed's in a good position. They can still cut rates and they can be they can begin QE at any time that they choose. So they bought themselves about a year. Um, now what I track with the Fed internals, they continue to surge. Uh, the Fed just 3.0 is still in a buy, and multiple systems and forecast models are turning positive. Uh, so there, you know, we have the big runs, which is long, and then there's this combined Saturn cycle. We're going to get into that. That actually made a low on 320, and then the CAT signal, which is a combined astro signal, makes a low today. Uh, so I think that's that's a good sign. I mean, the fact that we're holding up this is this is a very simple moving average picture of the Nasdaq, but you can see that this. I mean. Considering everything that's been going on, I mean, you still have a rising 50-day moving average above the 200. You, know, you would ex you would think that in a situation like this, you would have just horrible selling and markets crashing. You don't see that. They're still holding up okay here. Uh, so that's a good sign, actually, that we're seeing that in the NASDAQ. And the S&P, it's a similar situation. In fact, the S&P is a little more stable here. You can see that the 50 is still above the 200. So just from that large-scale perspective, I think that's a pretty positive thing. Um, now, I track behind the scenes. I track what's going on with the Fed internal. So this this has actually made a positive divergence here. You can see that they've really been working behind the scenes here. And, and again, we saw that with the bailouts. But there's a positive divergence here. So when, when they start ramping this up here, you can see the market was where this green line is. And that's created a positive divergence. So I think we have to go back at least to this level. This is the 4200 level here. And then after that, we'll see. But I think 
It was a big negative divergence that had to fulfill. I had talked about that before too. This had gone up here. It had to come all the way back down to that 38.48. It did. And I think the next divergence is a positive one here, uh, pushing to the upside. So I think they're doing a pretty good job of keeping this stable considering everything that's going on. So, you know, we'll see. It's a, it seems like it's a day-to-day -day thing, but things kind of calmed down here. We had a situation where it was literally like every day something new was happening, even over in Europe with Credit Suisse. But overall, I do like the situation that we're in here uh, from, from this perspective here. Now, this is the Fed juice 3.0 here. This is also in a buy, this red arrow here. Uh, and so tomorrow the quad lunar will go into a buy. So overall, I think uh, just holding up, I, I think, like I said, considering the circumstances, holding up pretty well. Now, there's also a geomagnetic activity that we look at. So this is something I always like to, to check on because when these geomagnetic storms come to the Earth, it can be a bearish situation for the S&P. So th these these numbers here represent the strength of the, the geomagnetic activity across the Earth. And so there are a couple of minor storms coming. There's a G1 and a G2 storm coming. Uh, you can see here the 23rd and the 24th. So tomorrow there is a minor G2. Now this was originally uh, not supposed to be in the morning tomorrow, so it was supposed to be out further. So this can have a slightly bearish effect on the markets. But typically uh, we need to see a, a storm get up into this G3 range. That's a strong storm. And when we get the G3 storms, we can get larger pullbacks in the markets. But we have, I would say, a series of minor storms here coming today and tomorrow. So at least on the short term, that can create some headwinds for the markets. So we have these forecasting models that we look at. And what I try to do is I combine different astro models together to try to give us an idea of what, you know where is this market going. So we are at some type of an astro low here right now. This is something that I published at the beginning of the month. So this is the, tw the 23rd here. So we're at a low, and so this does start to rise now. And we also just hit an important low on the 20th with this big Saturn cycle. Uh, so I think we're at a, a, a nice astro low right now uh, for these markets. And so if the, if, the, if the markets can kind of stabilize here, the astro cycles at least now are starting to push to the upside. And so that's, that's a good sign for the S&P. Now, Saturn just changed signs. It went into the sign of Pisces. And so... As you pointed out, these planets are nothing more than the hands on a clock. It's a it's a period of motion. It's a cycle, right? So it's a cycle. So Saturn is roughly 29 year cycle. So you can see here on this chart, these are the different zodiac signs. All that this represents is a position in space on the tropical zodiac. It's just like the hands on a clock, if you can think of it that way. Uh, and so you can see here this this represents this is the Dow Jones going back to the 1800s. And so this is Saturn and Pisces here. So typically when the Dow Jones starts Saturn and Pisces, it's generally a positive period for the first part of Saturn and Pisces, and then it dips after that. So that's the typical response of the markets. It typically tends to go up in the beginning and then down. So this is roughly two and a half years into here, but um, this is the general pattern. So in general, this is a positive pattern here for these markets. And then this is a, a zoomed in picture here of the Saturn cycle for Saturn and Pisces. So we're, we're coming over here. So we're right now we're into this March period here. There's a period of kind of sideways motion here. Then it goes up into next year. So this is 2024. goes up into about the middle to mid part of 2024, the summer. And then it, and then it has the issues on the back side of this uh, transit. So the beginning, the first side of this is generally positive. So I think, you know, if these markets can stable, and even if the Fed can start with QE again, which they can easily do, or cutting rates. I think there's an environment here where the markets could have a rally uh, going forward here, at least for this year. Uh, I, th I think that the environment looks generally positive. From this is, now, this is from the perspective of the cycles, the astro cycles. But I think overall, this is a pretty positive-looking picture here. And uh, I have one more. Do we have time for one more here? Yes, sir. We sure do. We got okay, one so more minute to go. Yeah, please do. Okay, so this is this is the cycle that that I was talking about. Now, this is an important cycle because I, I put all of the planets against Saturn. And uh, these Saturn tends to make good cycles, like in terms of forecasting for the markets. But you can see we just came into a low here. So this is 2023 here, out to 2024 here. So you can see we just came into a low here. And this thing uh, goes up until July. It has a pullback until about early September. And then it rallies again until October. So as far as I'm looking at here with, with the, the Astro, we're at a good spot here. Uh, and the, like I said, the markets look like they're in a pretty good position there with those moving averages. So, Okay. 
Hey, stay with us. We'll be right back, folks. Shane Smoley and WolfTrader.com. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks, with our last segment with Shane Smolian, TheWolfTrader.com. Please continue, my friend, and tell the folks how they can reach you if they would like. Sure. Uh, you, so you can reach me at uh, wolftraderfutures.com. Uh, each Saturday we have a webinar. So this Saturday uh, we're going to have this webinar on Pluto and Aquarius and financial markets. So we've had a, a strange month here. We've had two of the outer planets change signs. Saturn went into Pisces, which is what I was talking about on the previous graph. And Pluto, uh, which is even slower moving, uh, move is, is going to move into Aquarius. So, Aquarius. so we're going to talk about that on Saturday. Uh, this is a little bit of a tougher read because the, the orbit is so large that we don't have as much data. We don't have as many samples on this. Uh, so it's a little bit tougher, but I'm going to do my best to kind of navigate through that and talk about that. Uh, so we're talking about just some some general themes that go on in the world and then in markets. The Saturn and Pisces, I just showed you the previous graphs. Uh, but generally, the Saturn and Pisces graph is positive in the beginning and then negative towards the end. And uh, so if you want to come by, it's on the YouTube channel. It's Wolf Trader Futures and... We come every Saturday at 8 o'clock, and if you want to join, come out and join us. It's free. You can chat with us and ask questions. And I try to do a different topic each week just to kind of keep things fresh and original. 
So this week we're, we're going back into the astro topics of Pluto and Aquarius. So. Well, that's good. And you're going to join us on the next half hour, uh, in a half hour, with uh, going to finish up on uh, the next program, too. So that'd be great. We'll see you in about uh, 30 minutes. How does that sound? Sounds good, Larry. Thanks so much. Okay. We'll talk some astrology. I like to hear that stuff. Okay. Sounds <laughs> Don't good. Don't know much about it, but I like to hear it. Okay, partner. We'll see you in about a half an hour. Shane Smolian, folks. Wolftrader.com. And we got um, June Gold just broke the $2,000 level, folks. Uh, Treasury bonds are still acting strong. Uh, stock market's weakening a little bit, a little more than a little bit. We've given back uh, 300 points in the Dow, which is uh, more than a little bit. That's for sure, just like yesterday almost. We closed below yesterday's low, folks. That's not going to be good, but that's my two cents worth. 877-927-6648. 